Hi everyone, a very good afternoon to everyone. This is Roger Wang. I'm the president of the Marketing Institute of Singapore, and I'm also the president of the Marketing of Singapore Marketing Institute of Singapore Business School. And uh, I'm currently also the director of the Marketing Institute of Singapore Academy. All right. So today, actually, we went through a very interesting session. I was hearing hearing what uh, Professor Philip Kotler said about putting the emphasis on the stakeholders instead of the shareholders itself. So that leaves us a lot of thinking that, you know, perhaps, seriously, we should be paying our staff a lot more. <laughs> okay, by the way, you know, uh, from uh, Professor Scotland's uh, sharing session, he talks about uh, billionaires. Yes, we do agree, you know, there are a lot of billionaires, especially in the US and in China itself. Perhaps all these billionaires should start thinking, you know, about giving back uh, to the society. Besides, you know, it is actually from the society that they actually amass all this wealth that made them a billionaire today. So, my advice to all these billionaires from US, from China, all right, please do your part, uh, you know, in actually ensuring that the community get to benefit from your wealth. Okay, nevertheless, let me start today's uh, topic. Uh, thanks to uh, CCPIT, uh, Commercial Sub Council, thanks to Mark Plus uh, for helping to organize this. Um, so, today our topic is about the ASEAN pivot. ASEAN brand, Brands Marketing Beyond the Pandemic. So I'll, I'll be touching on some of the uh, case studies that are coming up from Singapore itself. Okay, so how brands are in Asia are paving the way towards for a post-pandemic recovery. Now I'll be touching on four areas. Alright, uh, the first area will be travel and tourism. How going local and driving anticipation for the future. Okay, second will be on retail. This is one of the uh, economic driver indicators for most economy in the world. How accelerating digital transformation are able to actually help the retail sector in getting back to the norm. Third will be of course the financial service. As we all know, Singapore is actually the financial hub of the Asia itself, in Asia, in ASEAN. Alright, so therefore, providing contactless services and support towards the uh, SME community, the small medium enterprise. And last but not least, the FMCG product, the fast moving consumer goods how they are adapting by thinking out of the box, okay? Now, first and foremost, the very first on travel tourism, going local and driving anticipation for the future itself. Now, travel and tourism uh, organizations have recognized that this trend by adapting and to keep their existing customers engaged. Now, you can't be just leaving them alone, right? So, they start to en uh, encourage local or domestic travel. Now, if you have been to Singapore, you know how big Singapore is, okay? Alright, so therefore, you know, to actually adopt a domestic travel will be challenging. But it is actually during this time that, you know, Singapore will actually discover like some little places that our local citizens have not been to, okay? So that is the domestic travelling that we're talking about. And of course, to inspire future travellers coming from the world into Singapore so that they can start visiting some of these places. It may not be the Marina Basin, it may not be just the iconic Merlion itself. There are in fact a lot of small little places which you can visit. So this is where our Singapore Tourism Board has actually launched a 45 million Sing dollar in terms of domestic uh, tourism campaign just to boost uh, the travel and tourism sector. Now, Changi Airport in Singapore, one of the iconic brands in Singapore itself, has created a transit holding area to woo travellers by providing them with a new transit experience, including snows area, light entertainment, safe delivery of duty-free purchases and more. Now, of course, you know, Singapore is really one of the shopping haven. If you have visited Singapore itself, our, our airport, it's almost like a mega mall. So this is where, to, in order to keep the, um, the occupants or the merchants in the Singapore uh, Changi Airport, uh, you know, to keep them as in, you know, in terms of their business afloat, so they actually introduced a safe delivery in terms of the duty purchases in Singapore. Now, Singapore Airlines has also introduced a dine-in option. Very creatively, what they did. You know, Singapore, <laughs> Singapore, we can't fly. There's no domestic. All right, we are too... From Jewel, which is, I think, our latest Singapore icon itself. So. Singapore Airlines actually introduces a dine-in option in a park A380 Jumbo Jet where the meals ranges between the economy to the first class. Now this is actually to allow people uh, the first time perhaps you have never travelled, never on board before 
all people to actually reminisce uh, during the time they were traveling and they actually watch a movie on board while they dine. Okay. Now next, let's move on to the retail sector itself. Now the retail sector actually went through a very challenging period in Singapore, especially during the lockdown. But very quickly, what they did was they adopted accelerating digital transformation. We earlier heard about China from China itself about live streaming. Now this is something that's picking up in a very big way in Singapore retail sector. Now COVID nineteen has actually exposed the need of the retail industry to go into a digital transformation in order to actually continue to reach out to their consumers who increasingly prefer to conduct transaction online and from home. They've got no choice. But the moment within this year itself, when they got used to it, even my grandmother at home are able to actually purchase things online right now. Okay? At the comfort of their home, at the same time being safe. Alright, so therefore brands in Singapore such as Isetan, Metro, Robinson were compelled to sell their products through e-commerce platforms such as Lazada, Shopee and Q10. Now if you don't know about this, please do a search, right? These are the e-commerce platforms that are very popular in Singapore. It also, we are also seeing the other retail giants such as the BHG has also set up their own proprietary shopping platform. Okay, and the famous brand such as Shadow has also joined hands with Isetan Mitsukoshi, one of Japan's largest retail group to launch sales program through live streaming. And this has actually shown to grow popular in popularity in, within the last few months due to COVID, coronavirus disruption. Okay, <coughs> and of course, my next sector that I would like to, like to touch on will be the financial sector, the financial hub in Singapore itself. Now, um, you know, during COVID itself, right, you know, coming in contact is something that's very challenging. So the financial sector immediately goes into providing contactless service and support. For financial player or service player in Singapore itself, their very first priority is to ensure business continuity among the small medium enterprise. But at the same time, they need to make sure that, you know, the branch offices that they have will never be the vector for virus. Okay, so this means shifting to digital and contactless service as much as possible. Okay, so, <coughs> and at the same time, digital finance as a means to advance inclusion and sustainability. Now, this is a quote by Mr. Ravi Menon, the Managing Director of the Monetary Authority of Singapore and Ms. Joanne Be uh, Barefoot, uh, so the CEO of Alliance for Innovation and Registration and Funtech, when they were mentioning in Fintech in Abu Dhabi Festival 2020. So, as you can see, Singapore, we are very quick in terms of adapting. So now, it's very common for us to do pay now, all right, in terms of transaction. It's all via apps, phone apps itself. We are no longer using just the digital, uh, the, the actual currency, but more of the digital currency itself. All right, and Singapore number one bank, the Singapore DBS bank itself, is providing complementary insurance coverage and, ho for, uh, and home loan payment relief for customers who are affected by the pandemic, as well as support packages for small and medium enterprise. Now, its COVID-19 hospital cash insurance policy, for example, has a record sign-up of 52,000 within a day at its peak itself. Now, that speaks volume in terms of Singapore in the area of uh, finance. Uh, right? So, last but not least, I'm giving a very short time so I have to complete this as soon as possible. The FMCG product itself. Now, this is most of the fast-moving consumer goods brand owners are actually adapting more on thinking out of the box. As you have earlier heard, from our China counterpart, Mr. Jack Yao, and our Vice President, that he said that you know uh, live streaming is gaining popularity in China, being one of the key uh, engagement platform. So for fast-moving consumer goods itself, in fact, not just in Singapore, in several ASEAN countries, Asian countries itself are actually opti optimistic. All right, for their post-pandemic re uh, recovery. Now, a very recent survey shows that business in this area are expected to return to norm faster within five months as compared to six months they are expected by other industries. So the food service provider, as you know, Singapore, we have the hawker culture, okay? So uh, it is actually one of the highlights in Singapore if you to visit Singapore itself. We, this uh, sector has really been uh, hit hard uh, even uh, during pandemic time and even during post-pandemic era itself, okay? So according to Facebook and Buns and Company report, it shows up to 77% of consumers in Southeast Asia preparing the food at home right now. So good for all of us. But 
definitely Singapore in this area itself, we have actually launched a lot of apps to help our hawker, our hawkerpreneur in terms of still catering to their uh, audience or their customers. And that's why you can see GrabFood Delivery Panda actually took on a very huge role right now in the area of helping the hawkers to provide services back to their customers, all right, in terms of delivery. Now, of course, one of the top brands in Singapore will be Tiger Beer, okay? <laughs> so we have got a VIP that's coming up. <laughs> Tiger Beer in Singapore actually comes up with a hashtag support our streets initiative, and that's to encourage customers to support our local F&B outlets, okay, which incidentally are also Tiger Beer's customers. So this campaign actually allows their customers to redeem up to two bottles of beer at this outlet when they are reopened after the lockdown. So, as you can see, you know, this is, these are all very challenging times, very challenging period. Alright, so during this period of time is where I think all of us have to think innovatively and at the same time, stay safe and continue to engage our customers through other more innovative platforms such as what I have mentioned for those in Singapore. So with that, I would like to share my details. My name is Roger Wang. If you want to reach out to me, you can WhatsApp me. It's on the screen right now. Or you can actually scan on WeChat itself. So with that, thanks to the organizer. Thanks, Faith, for moderating our ASEAN Tuckers. And I would like to see all of you real soon traveling to Singapore again post-COVID pandemic.